is this what I what I originally did here's how I did it here's how I did it so I would upload YouTube videos and I would like I would take my raw footage I would edit them into YouTube videos and um, and then I would post them on my channel but eventually occasionally sometimes a thing would happen where I would get a copyright strike or a community guideline strike and my video would be taken down and that's a video that I really wanted to have and now I lost it um, and that would happen so many times where I'm like I need some kind of a backup system right and so I tried so many different things and it was like if I'm working optimally if I'm if I'm working at my absolute optimal ability I've seen what I have when I have unlimited resources I fill up about a hundred gigabytes a day of footage that's how much I add to my catalog I'm not adding nearly that much because I'm not working optimally right now but it, it's ridiculous when I actually want to uh, uh, back things up and, and keep stuff for the future you know and so I'm like you know what there's really only one solution I can find and it's not even a great solution it's a mediocre solution but it is a solution and it was just upload all my raw footage on YouTube so that way if I ever need it if my edited video gets deleted uh, I can go back to that YouTube channel that has all the raw footage see where it is by date and then download it all and it'll be compressed because YouTube lowers the quality of your videos but at least it's something at least it's better than nothing right so I started uploading the raw footage on there, uncut, unedited, just footage of like me hanging out with my friends and things like that, uh, random like YTP footage. It was just like stacks on stacks of footage, uh, stuff I had downloaded from the internet, like investigations I had done, and I would just gather everything and just put all the videos and screenshots together in a final video and just export it on there. Um, that way in case I needed to go back, oh wait, I need, I need this like evidence from this thing. I got to go in here to this one hour video. I know it's in here somewhere. I'd literally go in there, um, put it all together, upload it on YouTube and be done with it. And I'll be like, this is my backup. I don't have to keep it on my hard drive anymore. So I could clear up space. You know, that's why, that's why you see me clearing up space every chance I get, even though I have four terabytes of empty storage and I'm only using like 50 gigabytes of it. It just, I'm in the habit of the moment I'm done with something, the moment it's backed up, I get rid of it. I take it out of my computer. I stay organized. I stay clean like that. And when I was doing that, about a couple months down the line, this is only, this is like three months, dude. Like three or four months after I started doing this, I used a web scraper to uh, gather the details on all of my um, YouTube channels. And it turns out that YouTube channel that I was uploading my raw footage on was actually the one getting the most views. And I, I saw the details and I'm like, what the hell is this? I hadn't logged in in months. And so I finally logged back into that channel and I look and it says 600 subscribers. And I'm like, what the hell is this? How are people subscribing? And that's how it all started. And I'm like, you know what? Screw all this other garbage I've been doing. I'm just gonna make pure, authentic content. The kind of stuff that people would stream. Like the kind of stuff I was uploading was literally, if you were to take an IRL streamer or a streamer that just does random stuff and take their raw footage, their VODs and upload their VOD channel. That was like my VOD channel. That's what that was. It was like the equivalent of what you would see an IRL streamer's VOD channel would be. That's basically how it was. And um, I got so many subscribers on that channel. It was unreal. I was just getting like, there was a point where I, I got like 3000 subs in one week. And it peaked at like, yo, you there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it peaked at like 20k subs and then it went down and a lot of copyright stuff happened. A lot of community guidelines stuff happened. It's like one of the videos you posted, like... What's one of the videos I posted? Yeah, like the, one of them that like was really good. Ah, oh, dude, they're all gone. They're all deleted. My best video I ever made. It was the first video I ever made to hit a million views. Do you remember, um, do you remember that whole trend that was like something portrayed by Spongebob? Oh man, what a shame! But oh wait, no, no I know. Wait, oh, oh, I actually know what you're talking about. I actually know. What you're yeah, yeah. So I made one of those videos, and it was like it was like America portrayed by SpongeBob. And what I did, did is I took clips. I made it super offensive. It was like you watch SpongeBob, right? Uh, no, my parents actually didn't let me. Really? Nope. Damn, I did. I took like random clips. And I made them like super accurate. Like it didn't, it honestly took me only like 15 minutes to make the video, but I knew like, I, dude, I was in flow state when making that video. I knew it was gonna go viral. 
um, and I put I put clips of like uh, police brutality, like the O.J. Simpson murder, um, Rosa Parks getting sent to the back of the bus, uh, uh, the Boston Marathon bombing, 9/11, like all the, I put like all of this stuff in there, and it was like a super funny video. It was genuinely a really funny video, and it's gone now. There's some re-uploads on YouTube of it because it was such a popular video. They're gonna re-upload it, but they cut out a lot of stuff to avoid getting copyright strikes. And all like the funniest things from it are all cut out because they were also really offensive. And um, I uploaded that video. I sent it to everyone I knew on Snapchat. I sent it to all my Instagram DMs. Like I was spam like marketing it hella. And after like the first day it had like 200 views. And then um, like two weeks goes by and it's at like 205 views. And I knew from the beginning, like this has a high chance of virality. So I just kept pushing it and I put, I did as best as I could. And then after like a month or so, it just immediately takes off. It gets like a thousand views that day. The next day it gets like 20 K views. The next day it gets like 40 K. The next day it gets a hundred K. The next day it gets 200 K. Then it gets taken down. And then I, and then I appeal it. I put it back up and it starts getting views again. Then it gets taken down again. And this happened like six times with this one particular video. Viacom was brutal on this video. I can't imagine what all these other guys had to deal with who had way more popular videos than I did that were in the like tens of millions because a lot of those portrayed by SpongeBob videos did insane. Um, yeah, that's just like one example. That's one example. But that was my, that was my biggest video ever. Um, one of my videos was, uh, this video blew up like crazy. Actually, this was my most viral video, like mo most like viral, viral one, which was, um, do you know who that Poppy is? No. She was super, super popular back in the day. Um, here, let me, that Poppy. So if you, um, she was like, she like makes music and it's like whatever, um, just like a normal, another normal pop star. But the weird thing about it is uh, she had this like weird, she had this YouTube channel where she would make all these like really like demonic style, really uh, uh, cryptic type of video. Like before any of these like internet mysteries was a thing, like she was really out here doing these like internet mysteries back. Uh, yeah, l look at this, look at this. This is her mi most iconic one. I'm and it's just a video of her, yeah. like here, I'm sending it to you, I'm, I'm, I'm DMing it to you. And it's like this like really weird video, just 10 minutes and one second, obviously, they gotta get that ad revenue, um, of her just saying, I'm Poppy, repeatedly. 27 mil views back in 2015. And I remember like people were trying to like figure out like, what the hell is with her? And you'll see like, Poppy breaking character. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, what's her name? Uh, it's Mariah, her real no, name. No, no. I, I'm making a joke. Oh, well, I know. I did the research. Oh, okay. Well. So, so everybody, there was a time where PewDiePie did a video on her. Uh, Game Theory did a video. Matt Pat, like, all these people were trying to piece together, like, what the hell is going on? Because if you go to her channel, you go to her earlier videos, it was, like, really weird, like, like this, crazy demonic stuff. And now she's a lot more... Like, now you could see a lot of behind-the-scenes footage. You could see, like, she, oh, she's, like, a real person and all this stuff. But back then, people were like, what the hell is going on? This is crazy weird. So I did a hell of research. I, like, talked to people on Reddit. I got, like, insider information. I did, like, a week of research, and I got, like, 30 or, like, 40 minutes of, like, footage of her before she did any of this persona stuff, like, when she had, like, black hair and all this stuff and, like, old vlogs she used to make and, like, her friends... And they would plan out, okay, we're going to do this stuff so we can go viral. We're going to make it seem really mysterious. And we're going to build this character around you. And she's just like this like product of her record label trying to go viral. And they went viral and uh, they deleted all those old clips of her. Like any remnants of her, it's very, very difficult to find. Uh, like her old song covers and things like that. And I had footage that literally like nobody else had. I don't, I think that footage that I had is literally lost of time. I uploaded it, it got like no views for like six months, and then six months down the line, actually on the very, it was so weird, I thought this was intentional on their part, on the very same day that her channel was created, it was like August or September, something like that, let me go to her channel, um, yeah, or October 6th, right, on October 6th, this is 2011 that her channel was made, on October 6th, like 
2016 or 2015, one of those t years, that video just blew up and it got like 500,000 views in one day. And then with a the moment the video had 700K views, I'm like, oh, this is going to a mill. This is going to a mill. Like two days later, the video had 700K views and everybody was like, oh my God, this is crazy. I can't believe all this footage exists. She's like, a t this like brings a whole new light into like this whole investigation that was going on. And then um, I got a cease and desist letter from her record label. I actually have it. I actually have the cease and desist letter. Let me, wait, 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 hold up. Um, uh, it's, in, it's in my hard drive here. Hold up, hold up. I just gotta search for, okay, yeah. Here, here it is, here it is. Yo, you there? Yeah, I'm here. It was such a trippy experience because I never received like a, um, oh, okay. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this. No, this was 2017 that it, damn, my, my memory is really fuzzy of this. So here, I'm gonna send this to you on Discord. Look, that was the video. And this was right as it was blowing up. Like I got the notifications from all the comments and right as it was blowing up, I was like, oh damn, that's crazy that this is like happening. Um, and my, wait, what? Use light mode. This was before YouTube had a dark mode. But um, my channel, as you can see, it's A F R A S Z, right? My name is not A. My name is A F R A A Z. The reason why it's A F R A S Z is because if you look at the letters, it's Afraz Faison Rahim, A K Sean or Zoib. Shanor is Wuffles in the Discord server. Zoib is Zoib in the Discord server. A K is not in the Discord server. Rahim is also not in here, um, but he should be. I don't know why the hell he isn't in here. He's off doing military stuff. Faison is F Z. Yeah. And I am me. And it worked out so perfectly that I'm like, damn, I got to keep that as my username instead. But this, um, look at this, look at this. This is, I'm sending you this. Don't share this with anyone. This is the cease and desist letter. I gotta, I gotta like, um, Represent the artist on that yeah, <laughs> they were serious. Like it wasn't like some gimmick. Like oh, we're trying to take down the content, but we're trying to make it seem like we're taking down the old content to make it look like some sort of conspiracy. No, they were legit trying to get rid of her old content. Hold on, I want to annotate this and uh, get rid of all like the personal information. As you can see, there's an email address up top. One, one of them is my email address. One of them is the email address of a rapper. Just ignore that. I'll explain that story on a different day. Um, and you had problems. You made so many problems with some random ass people. Yeah, dude, I was not, um, this was, this was, hold up. I want to, I want to do this real quick. Yeah, I was, a. I was just, I was a menace, bro. I was a troll. I was a menace. I was causing problems for hella people. It was completely unnecessary. Um, but I got hella views and it was something I was interested in doing. Hold on, let me open up paint real quick. Ah, oh, that's way too bright. Yeah, yeah, look at the date, look at the date. October 24th, so they sent that literally right after the video blew up. And then if you look at the address under my name, that's my dad's old office, his old like PO box. That's where I had my you YouTube. Had, that's where I had my had YouTube money coming to. The YouTube checks would come to that address because you had to have a business. But I was too young to have a business. October twenty fourth. Yeah. This was like oh damn. Yeah, this was right after the thing happened, and the link is still there. But when I got this, I was like panicking. I immediately deleted the video, and then after I deleted the video, I'm like. Oh my God, what have I done? It's gone, it's literally gone. And some of the footage that I had, dude, I had footage that literally I have, I did an investigation after that. I spent like weeks after that looking for the same footage. It's gone, dude, it's gone. Like I had some footage 
that literally was only on this video and nowhere else. Now it's like literally lost of time. You didn't keep it? I didn't keep it. I was stupid. If you would have posted that now. Oh, Did, no, I didn't keep it because this was my backup channel. These were my backups. I didn't have another backup. I deleted it from my backups. This wasn't a video of like a commentary. I planned on doing that. I planned on doing like a full uh, synopsis, like a recap of all the stuff I figured out about Poppy and her past and her record deal and all that sort of thing and how like they're using her, which they literally were. It was actually a totally messed up situation. Like she got, she basically got like screwed over big time. Um, and I was planning on making like a, a recap video on it. But in the meantime, I had just uploaded this to YouTube as just the backup footage in case I lost the footage on my PC. But that was, um, yeah. You got like 1800 bucks for this video. Yeah, I got a crazy amount of money. And dude, you know what? I, uh, I was like, around the time there was a lot of copyright issues on YouTube and by copyright issues, I mean, people were fighting back. Like the YouTube community was strong at this time, 2017, like H3H3 was making videos about their lawsuit. And they were like, hey, if you guys are um, struggling with copyright stuff and you're making uh, fair use content, which this was not fair use content. It was not at all. Um, it was literally just re-uploads, no commentary, nothing. Um, and he basically made videos like, oh, if you, if you guys are struggling with uploading fair use content to YouTube uh, while uh, people are trying to take you down, use this text. And it was like some template that a lawyer had written up. And it was like, my content constitutes fair use guidelines and all this stuff. And basically, there was a, there was like a couple months where if you use that text, um, literally some like YouTube, whatever, like YouTube was like, no, never mind, I'm not dealing with this. There's too much of a headache, too much of a hassle to deal with this. People who are putting this in here, clearly they're watching these videos. Clearly they're out here. They're trying to, they have like an intended goal with this sort of thing. So we're not, we're not going to deal with it. We're just going to let you upload your video. So I did that. Like my video got uh, content ID'd. I did that. Um, I sent them the like copy and paste text that H3H3 put up there and my video got to stay up monetized. It was monetized till the very end. That's why I sent the cease and desist because there's some legal thing where you're not allowed to, uh, you're not allowed to copyright claim a video that has already been claimed for the same reason and been proven, been shown to not violate that claim. And they basically messed up and they said, oh yeah, your video is fair use when it wasn't. So these guys, these like the Poppy's record label was screwed. They couldn't copyright strike my video. They couldn't do it. They literally didn't have the ability to do it. I already got cleared um, from like their team from, from copyright striking me. Okay, what were they gonna do? They sent a cease and desist and they got my email address and they got the email address of a guy I was working with. And um, I don't know how they got them. The email addresses that I that are on there that are on the top left, don't say them out loud. Um, they literally, I, dude, these were not on my channel. These are not on my channel. My channel was not linked to any of my Make email right It now. wasn't linked to my social medias. These email addresses were not public. Neither was my actual personal address. They somehow, or the address that's on there, they somehow like got in the back end or something. I don't know what the hell they did. I don't know how content ID works from uh, like client side or whatever, right? I don't know. I don't know how they got this information, but they got it. And it don't, don't say it aloud for real, for, for I'm streaming. I'll, I'll tell that story a different day, but um, I'm gonna have to cut that out. But. Oh, wait, okay. I was like, never mind. It's whatever, it's whatever, it's cool. But yeah, this happened. This was such a crazy, like, I panicked. I panicked when they got my personal information. That's never happened before. Nobody ever like doxed me like that before. It's happened oh, after that. But it was always just like kids who found me on like true people search and things like that. You know what I think they did? What? In one of your videos, you may have shown a location. I didn't, I did not. I did not. That, that oh, location, I've never even been to. I would get my dad, I would tell my dad, hey, you're gonna get a letter from YouTube and it's gonna have a code in it. Can you get your receptionist to send me the code? Though. Wait, what? Maybe they asked YouTube to get uh, Yeah, them. that's what I'm thinking. No, but. Why the hell would YouTube is, YouTube is notorious for being a difficult uh, company to contact, even if you're that big. They, they had to have some, I don't know what the hell they had. They, like the channel was owned by me and it's very clear the guy who's behind it is Afraz Ali. But I don't know how they got those email addresses.
those email addresses I've never shown to the public. I've never put out there ever. I don't even email people with those email addresses. I don't email people at all with them. I literally, I use them for accounts and nothing else. I use them for like businesses and nothing else. And I've made sure to stay private on all this stuff. Found your name and then traced it back to your like bank account information. Yeah, I, I don't know what the hell they did. I don't know what they did. I don't know how they got the address of my dad's office, which I, they're, the only connection that I have to that address is either my dad did something under my name with that address or they got access to YouTube backend because that was the uh, that was where YouTube was sending me their checks. So I don't know what the hell they did, but it was it was freaky. It freaked me out. I didn't I still don't know what they did. I have ideas, but yeah, it was such a stupid it was such a, and I looked up these people. I tried to figure out who they were. I literally tried to contact some of the lawyers afterwards. Like, hey, do you have that video? Do you have that video? And obviously, they didn't take me seriously. I contacted them on LinkedIn and stuff like that. Because I like, that video is lost to time. It's literally lost now. And, and there, is a, there is some conspiracy suspicion that maybe uh, if a video is large enough, which the video was definitely large enough, YouTube will save backups of everything. They'll literally save backups and they'll never allow people to touch it, but they'll save backups just in case, the same way they save backups of all the Google Photos stuff, the same way they save backups of all like this other garbage on Google Drive and all that stuff, just for big data purposes, you know? And there is a possibility of that. And you know what? If I'm a millionaire billionaire one day, I'll definitely have to go to YouTube and hit them up about it because that footage is still very valuable um, just for the cause, you know, just 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 to show people like, hey, look at this lost footage. But as far as I know, that footage is lost to time. It's forever gone. Yeah, that sucks. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm deleting this message in, in here because I can't let that. Look, it's um, Discord is not the safest. Uh, it's not the most privacy oriented application out there.